Rep Shlomo. You know, Rep um, I have a feeling when every them get together, you got to sing one thing, you know? <laughs> but I, since uh, I want to sing one of the Alter Rebbe's Nagunim, which is, I wouldn't say I'm such a big maven on, on the Gine, but this is like, uh, give out. My Kelly Ato, they are dead, go join me. Eloika, Adoy, Mamabeko, Kelly Ato, they are dead, go. Sing loud, Keliato, may I deco, Eloika, Adai Memeco, Keliato, may I deco, Eloika, Adai Memeco. Friends, I have nothing to say really which you don't know. And um, I can only tell you, you know, everybody knows. First of all, there is no Jew in the world who, when he met the Rebbe, who should say, you know, it's the first time I met him and I'm a stranger, you know. There was no, no distance between the Rebbe and every Yid in the world. Like, any Yid who came before the Rebbe knew the Rebbe knows me from this lifetime, from previous lifetime. The Rebbe Mamish knows me forever. I want you to know, I once, at one of my concerts in Israel, a non-religious Yid came up to me, and he said, well, he'd become a little bit from. And I said to him, what turned you on? He says to me, I'll tell you something. I got divorced. My children don't talk to me. I'm very, very lonely. One morning, there's a bang on the door, and two Yid with spirits are standing outside. And they said, they're coming to you in the name of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He wants you to put on film. He says, what? There's a Yid in the world who cares so much for me that I should put on film? If this is what Yiddishkeit is, I want to be a Yid. I want you to know the holiness of the Rebbe was not that he was just a great leader and, you know, like giving out orders, organizing. This was also a gewalt. The Rebbe's koyach was that every yid in the world, mamish, absolutely knew that the Rebbe kissed him and thinks of him day and night. Sure, there are a lot of great leaders talk about the Rebbe's Yisrael. got to do something for yid and outreach, inreach, wide reach. You know, the word outreach always rubs me the wrong way. Outreach means you're outside and I'm, uh, you know, I'm reaching out. The Rebbe was an outreach, the Rebbe was in reach. Mama's reaching into the depths of the Yiddish and the Shema. 
I just want to share with you two fast stories because uh, whatever I know, everybody else knows also. But since uh, my sweetest cousin of Schleibel invited me, so I want you to know, you know, without getting too personal, I was learning in Lakewood, and I mamish tell you the truth, not that I was not in love with every yeet, but was outreach from afar, right? One day the rabbi says to me, Mamish, God give you talent to talk to Eden. You have to talk to Eden. Right now the world needs you to talk to Eden. I want you to know the rabbi gave me a Shama. Mamish, he gave me a Shama. I walked out and suddenly every Yid I saw, I want to try give out Yidala. You know, there's a big Rebbe. Uh, give out, right? Now listen to this. At that time when I was like, after that it was time for me like to stand on my own feet, not chas v'shonam without the Rebbe. Now is not the time to tell you stories, but anyway, let me tell you. <laughs> no, it's not. It's deep stuff and that's right now is the time. I would not leave the subway unless I caught one ye talk to. I don't mind. I remember sometimes I would walk, travel back and forth. The subway, Mamish, I'm not leaving until I found a ye. Okay, one, the night before Shuas, I have Shuas, and at that time I had the privilege of Mamish being able, Mamish, not just to talk to the Rebbe, but organization or outreach, but Mamish would sit with the Rebbe, would talk to each other, learning, and. What's going Aiden? What's going Aiden? Tell me. But anyway, I'm leaving the Rebbe four in the morning. And at that time, now I'm a rich schlepper then, or the poor schlepper, but anyway, today I would borrow money to go by the, by in a cab, but then I didn't have the chutzpah to take money, so I went by subway. And it's late at night, and I see opposite me, it looks to me like a Jewish boy, maybe 20 years old, 22, Mamish glowing. I say, hey, brother, I see you're so happy. What's the occasion? Oh, he says, you see, I'm Jewish, but I'm so proud to tell you, and at that time, Shuas was Friday and Shabbos. He says, I'm so proud to tell you that this Shabbos, the Sabbath, I'm getting married in a church in the Bronx to a non-Jewish girl, and uh, it's a very special, weekend for me. I knew it's a very special weekend for him. So, and you know something? There's only one way of talking to him. I said, listen to me. Mama, I appreciate it. It's very, very special that you're getting married. But I feel that you should get a blessing from a very holy man before you go to the chuppah. And just two stations back, there's this very holy man. I, be, I met you by divine providence. Come, let's go back to stations and I'll bring you to the Rebbe. I'll never forget it. By that time it was 4.30 uh, of Shuas. And I knocked on the door. The Hedek Rebbe opens the door. I don't have to tell you, you know, a lot of people have had the privilege of walking into the Rebbe of Yechidis, but not many people had the privilege that the Rebbe opens the door. Something else. Rebbe opens the door, you know. Mamish, peace, Kalisha, I'd say, like, right. And I was, had my arms around this boy, and, uh, and he doesn't speak, I found out he doesn't speak Yiddish. Rebbe says, so, oh, Schleimer, who brings to me, though, you know, what, what do you bring there? So I said, he needs a little thick and he's getting made in the church on Shabbos. <laughs> I mean, how far can you go, right? <laughs> I mean, not, not many of us had this privilege, right? <laughs> We're not even hoping for it, anyway. So, listen to this. Remember, says for me, wait outside. I waited till about 7.30. Very close to the door, was saying, Tell him, Amish. You know what the Rebbe was doing? Washing out his neshama. Washing out his neshama. 
this was not just a little dust. Ah, Gewalt, the Rebbe had to do plastic surgery on his neshama, you know? <laughs> Cut very deep. The Rebbe opens the door, and this boy's eyes are red with tears. The Rebbe says, take him to the mikveh, you know, at that time the Christira mikveh, and uh, then put on film with him. And I don't have to take the end of the story. He was Shavuos and Lubavitch, you know, Gewalt. I want to tell you one more Gewalt story. You know, the Heilige Robschitze, after the Heilige Stretner left the world, took Sidem, I'm sorry, Streliske left the world, took Sidem of the Streliske came to Robschitze. And they were standing in the same room as Robschitze, and a Yid walked in, a little bit of a sinner, a sinner man. And uh, he says to the Rebbe, ask him, how are you, whatever the Rebbe just said. He says, I don't keep Shabbos, I don't keep Yontif and everything. And the Rebbe just says to him, is God treating you so badly that you treat him so bad? And the heat fainted. the pain, the way he treats God. And those three Strelis Kirsidim began laughing. So the Rav says to them, I don't understand. A yeet faints away with pain because it feels so bad that he did so much wrong and you are laughing. He says, Rabbi, you don't understand. Before the Helige Strelis left the world, we asked him, who should be our Rebbe? He says, you should take a Rebbe who can wash out the neshama of a Yid with a few words. So listen to me. At that time I was hanging around a little bit at Columbia University and uh, learning Siddhas with them. That was just the beginning. And in walks a young man and uh, again, go out. He says to us, you're all misinformed because you don't know that the real Messiah, you know, is the one who has a Jewish mother, you know, without mentioning names. <laughs> <laughs> one of our chavre, right? Anyway, <clears throat> and he starts telling us that Mamish, every morning when he wakes up, Brother JC is already by his bedside, and his mom, you see what it is? It was so deep inside of him, it was not so simple. I somehow managed to bring him to the rabbi. And he, and he began putting on film, but it was not, not for real yet. And he was like torn apart, Nebuch, between believing in JC or believing in the living God. Finally, two days before Rosh Hashanah, I want you this was the first year to have seen Yudalev. The Rebbe says to me, where's, where's this boy? I said, Rebbe, you know, he's going through hard times. The Rebbe says, please make sure you see Rosh Hashanah. Before the keys, I don't have to tell you, anybody has ever been to Barbara's keys? Awesome, right? I can say it's not from this world because it's not even from the other world. It's not for even for us to know. The Rebbe calls him before the keys and says, where is he? Call him over. Do you know the Rebbe took him under his talus by the keys? After the keys was over, he comes out from the Rebbe's talus. I said to him, what happened? He says, what happened, I'll never know. But it's a miracle I'm still alive. Mama, she washed him out. To the deepest depths of his neshama. I don't know if to tell you the end. Hashem, he got married and has beautiful children. 
and Emma Sayyid and Emma Sayyid. You know what's so heartbreaking about the Rebbe leaving the world? That we know that there was never a Rebbe like this before. And there'll never be a Rebbe like this again. 